Hey everybody, this is Pete. I want to start out by wishing everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And my gift to you is today's awesome YouTube video. <laughs> this, yeah, I know, I'm a great gift giver. Anyway, in this video I want to demonstrate a technique for building a relationship between the center of this ball bearing and the position inside of this hemispherical opening so that we have a universal joint pretty easy to do. The twist is the customer wanted to have a gap so that this joint could be properly lubricated. So there's a couple ways that we can do this. I'm going to start out with the easy method, which is to build a constraint. You could also use a joint between the center of the ball bearing and the surface. And to make sure that things are working the way that they're supposed to, I'm going to click on the visual style found in the view tab and I'm going to switch this to shaded with hidden edges. That way we can take a look at it and we can see, yep, that's exactly a perfect fit, but that's not what we want. <laughs> so the easiest way to do this is I've got the part open here and I've already taken the time to build this, but what we can do, actually orbit that back, is I've used the thicken command. Now I guess I'll do it again. And what we can do is we can use the thicken command on the surface. So if you look closely, it wants to thicken it away from the slot. I want to actually reduce that or have it grow the hole. And what I've done is I've created a parameter that is that desired gapping. So by doing it this way, I hit OK and I go back to my assembly, it'll automatically apply that gap universally. So if you have the opportunity you're designing this, this would be the way to go because it's easy to design this part with the proper gapping. So that would work awesome. But let's say you already have the ball bearing sized up and you <clears throat> have already built the notch. So if I go back to this notch, let's say this is gone. So, oops delete that. So the other approach that we could take is I, if you don't have an origin plane, I made a plane in between them and I created a sketch. So if we take a look at the sketch, I know that the minimum lubrication point I want is going to be five thousandths or whatever that parameter value is. You can change it, right? Create a parameter to control that. And so I know the size of the ball bearing. And what I'm going to do is I create a line that's perpendicular to my groove or my hole, make it the size that I want, and then using the vertical constraint between the center point and my ball bearing center, I can compute this distance. So that's a way to do it. But what I ended up doing, instead of creating another parameter and passing that to the assembly, an even easier way to do that is after I've designed that, I will apply a work point to the center point of my ball bearing position. So that way, when I go to the assembly, I can use this work point to locate that ball bearing. So we'll come back over here. I'll delete this constraint so that we can reapply it. And then we can click on the constraint command, pick on the center of the ball bearing, find the work point. And what this allows me to do is it, again, it's not perfect, right? Because they're not sharing the same necessarily position, but you can see the minimum is indeed five thousandths. So that is an approach that you can take to get those gaps figured out and then make sure that your design has the proper lubrication. Again, if you can design the components that way to begin with, awesome. If you've already got the design, this is a way where you can position it to simulate that uh, lubrication. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.